Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and you subscribe to my channel because we got new things coming out all the time. This is an exciting time we live in. You're going to enjoy all the videos because God is moving by His Spirit. I'm going to be teaching you how to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to talk to you about angels. We're going to have lots of conferences that are going to come to you. So make sure that you always are ready for what God's going to do for you. You know, you know, when, in 45 minutes, you know, Jesus talked to me and I never hardly said a word. I said a word twice because I didn't want to talk about myself and what I knew. I wanted to hear what he had to say. So for 45 minutes, he talked. And you know what I, I noticed about him? I noticed that he has a command about him. That his presence demands respect. There's a fear of God that needs to come back to the church. A fear of God, yeah. Yeah, you just talked to my roommate. Because when Jesus walked in, he screamed like a little girl. Because the holiness of God was so strong, he was repentant of all his sins, and he's a born-again, spirit-filled preacher. And he's repenting. No, what made him do that? He said, he said, Kevin, he said, I felt like my flesh was going to peel right off my body. That's how holy God is. Jesus let us taste that. Now, he's a kind, loving God. Heavenly Father, too. And Jesus, his son, redeemed us. He loves us. But there's a command about him. And he's a commander of your faith. He's the commander of your life. Everything about you is intricately planned beforehand. And I saw where the books in people's lives need to be open through prayer. You need to intercede. You need to ask God to implement what's written about you. The angels... They're sent to do what's written in your book, not to wash your car or rub your feet or save you when you went through a red light. They're not your cleanup crew. They end up doing that, but they're not called to do that. Did you know that they have been briefed on what's going to happen to you tomorrow? And if you will side with God and his word, they hearken unto the voice of the Lord and they do his bidding. So in this operating room, he's talking to me, and I notice he has a command about him. And I thought, you know what? What has happened to our belief? What has happened to our faith? What has happened to Christianity? And I thought, you know what? If I could go back, because I saw that I had missed it. How many imagine when you, you, you appear before Jesus, you're going to realize, wow, everything I read about him is true, and I shouldn't have listened to all the lies. You will have that moment. And he will smile at you in love and say, welcome in, thou good and faithful servant. But at the same time, you will know that you did not fulfill everything that God had for you. I went through that. And I came back only for that reason, to tell you, don't let that happen. Don't let the power of God be hindered. Did you hear me? The words that are spoken about you, they are sealed in heaven. Now, when I went and left my body, those books were closed. I couldn't add anything to it. I couldn't take anything out of it. I was responsible for every idle word that I had spoken. And please don't write me, because I get people saying that's Old Testament. I go, well, it's in red in my Bible. Matthew twelve thirty six says you'll be held accountable for every idle word that comes out of your mouth. So don't, don't, please don't write me. Jesus said, every word you'll be judged by. That's why he said, you should always speak where you're going. Because he said, I am standing on your future. He said, go back and tell the people, I'm standing on their future. And I'm bidding them to come to me on the water. We need to give God our lives. We need to come to the cross again. Not to be saved again. But to... Bring respect to that altar of the cross where Jesus voted for you and nothing can be against you now. Did he not say through Paul in Romans chapter 8, if you read the end of that chapter, boy, oh boy, it's just too good to be true. That's what the gospel is. It's too good to be true. It says that we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
that nothing can separate us from the love of God. We're more than conquerors. That's the Jesus I met. He empowered me by his words. I saw that I had only operated at 35% of what I should have. And he sent me back. So that come back swinging now. And I'm telling you, you all be swinging by this, the, the end of this weekend too. Because God is for you. And you haven't messed up so much that he can't use you. I looked in Jesus' eyes. He's talking to me, not about this life. He's talking about the next life where I rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Can you imagine that? Do you know that's still in the Bible? Did you know he hasn't come back yet? Contrary to popular belief, he hasn't come back yet. I can't mess this up. He's right in front of me, and he told me this. He doesn't know when he's coming back. But he said, I'll tell you how you can hurry it up. Preach the gospel everywhere. So I was sent back. And when I was sent back, I am fully convinced of everything that I'm telling you. And that is, is that you can engage God on a new level. It is well worth it. But do not find yourself being judged in your heart because you did not exceed the expectations of heaven. I exceed them. I actually go beyond what I'm asked to do. Do you have those CDs? Yeah, just, get, just bring up the... This, I want to show you. This is what I, I'm teaching you now, warfare. This is warfare. Now, this is my wife, Kathy. Um, let's do this one first. Yeah, this one. Okay. All right, now, this, the reason I'm, t I'm showing you these is because the Lord tells me, he tells me, now, what happened when I came back was he sent me back with, from, where, from where I came with part of it. I actually came back with a portion inside my spirit. You know, Dean was talking about getting, getting chemo and all that, and, you know, x-ray, and, you know, it zaps you. Well, what about if you get zapped by God and then you get sent back and you can't fail? Is anybody here? Is this too good to be true? Well, you, you need to start smoking. You need to start putting this in your pipe. You know, marijuana isn't, isn't, isn't it. The most high is it. Did you know that Jesus also, I just want to tell you this. When I met Jesus, I stood before him. He took me around heaven. He showed me things that would make you want to stay there. But you know what? It was amazing. He wasn't assemblies of God. And he wasn't word of faith. And he wasn't Catholic. He was this, he was this organization called I Am. It was way beyond. So he told me, here's all the books you're going to write, and here's all the CDs you're going to make, and they're already, before I even do them, they're already done. And all I do is just go through the motions of doing it. But I want to show you something. The, the Lord told me to do one on the name of Jesus. What it is is I, I pray and fast for a week for each CD, me and my wife, and then I, I, after we can't pray hardly in English anymore because we're praying in tongues all the time, I get, I get so out of it that I go up and I speak into the microphone for 40 minutes from that realm. Okay, so when I did that, this is like there's 80 of them out there, but this is one of them, the name of Jesus. I just started to prophesy and to impart to people. Now, I'm not doing this to sell them. I'm giving these away. You can, get, you can listen to everything I have on YouTube for free, so I'm not in this for the money. There's over 100 things on, the, on YouTube for free so that people that can't afford to buy them can have them for free. So I'm not in this for the money. I am, I am well taken care of. You better believe I'm well taken care of. Ask my wife. She's well taken care of too. So I didn't come to entice you with anything. I'm telling you that when I put this in, into New York to the, to the organization that does this, the computer would not print out the name of Jesus Christ. And so they, every time the printer would go to print, you know, this is, these are made in mass, thousands at a time, and shrink-wrapped. They could not get the computer to, do, to take care of it. So the print, the print machine 
wouldn't print out the name of Jesus. And so even after they finished the product, they couldn't even post it in my dis the distributor that distributes them all over the world. You can buy them all over the world in any country. That distributor would not post this graphic. They could not get it to stay up. So, so I want to give them away. Because if it's, if, it, if it's really bothering the devil that much, do you understand? So, the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, that's number one. I just want to show you what real warfare is. See, real warfare, real warfare is when you go nose to nose with the devil and he knows you can beat him. Did I not say it's more than conquerors? Through him, okay, is that not in the Bible, or is that, are they taking it out? Is the NIV, the nearly inspired version, taking it out yet? No? Okay. Now listen, there's another one, just to show you. Just to show you, I talked about the fear of the Lord. The Lord told me to do one on the fear of the Lord. The computer would not take it. And so they printed them out and sent them to me with nothing on it except a nice picture of a mountain. The compu they tried. They could not get the printing machine to keep it. So I want to give that one away too. Just a couple of them. I'm going to do it every service. Now I tell you this. I want to tell you this. This is why. How many of you want to be debt free? Or the other? Now the, all the others must be debt free because nobody in their right mind would want to. Okay, there you go. Okay, I've got 100% participation now. Okay, so here's what I'm trying to tell you. When I came back from the dead, I met my wife when we were married, and we couldn't even pay our electric bill. We were in a brand new house. We had to fight just to get enough money together to get a house, and I came back from heaven. So it has nothing to do with that has everything to do with my responsibility to own it. Is there anybody here? you got to own your situation. You're not going to get better until you own it. My, my, one of my, my favorite, my, my favorite boss in all the world, he passed away yesterday. His name was Herb Kelleher. I worked for him for 29 years. He taught me. He put, he put me on a fast track for management. He taught me. He said, he said if you take care of the... Um, if you take care of the customer, I'll take care of you. He said, but you got to own it. you got to own everything. He said, so you. And you know what? At our company, you couldn't turn in something, a problem that you saw. You couldn't turn it in without turning in a solution in the same paragraph. They would not answer you unless you gave your opinion on how to fix it. Is there anybody here? So you got to own it. So we were taught... We were taught as employees that if you see a problem, you take care of it. And if you can't solve it, then you go to the next step up. So me and my wife, we fought. We, had to, we actually were looking for quarters. Now, God had moved supernaturally. He had sent me back from the dead. He said, I can't lose. He sent me to Seattle. I met my wife. We got married. The power of God. Jesus actually appeared to me right before I got married. And, and, and completely condoned and, and affirmed the marriage before we took our vows. And yet, we were looking for quarters to pay our electric bill. Is there anybody in this house that can identify with that? There is something wrong with that. You know what? I turned to my wife, and I said, something is wrong. I said, I came from a kingdom where there is no lack. I came from Jesus, who is the author and a finisher of my faith. And I came back to a world that's broken and a system who's, that's broken. It's actually rigged against us that we would never get out of debt. I said, something's wrong. And we took a stand against the devil that day. And you know what happened? Nothing. <laughs> but seven years later... We were notified that someone had just paid off our house. Now listen to me. My pastor would come through the door. And when he would come through our door, he would say, every time I walk through your door, the Lord says to me audibly, paid in full. He said that for seven years. Well, not all seven years. It was just a few years that we knew him. I'm telling this for a reason. You've got to own it. So today, 
it ends. That ends. Because you're going to own it. Okay, here, here's what happened. Our house got paid off. And then it just started from there. We kept tithing. Yeah, tithe. I said the word tithe. You know what's so interesting is? Is we were tithing off of what we wanted to make a month, not off of what was coming in, which was double. You know what happened when we started doing that? Nothing. But three years later, Southwest Airlines notified me that we were going on strike as a, as a flight attendant group at midnight. I was notified, don't show up for work. And right before midnight, the president of the company said, you know what, these flight attendants, they're with the customer 85% of the time. Just give them what they want. And so they gave me a 110% raise, which made it what we were tithing off of in faith. Is there anybody that didn't follow it? Because I will say it backwards, upside down, whatever it takes for you to get this. So while everyone's arguing about if the tithe is New Testament or Old Testament, we're enjoying the benefits of it. When I, when I retired last year, when I retired, they notified me. First of all, the financial company called me. They said, how did you get all this money? You, are, you have six times in there what you should have. And you retired 11 years early. We have never seen it. They handle billions, not millions, billions. And they said, we've never seen anything like this. And I said, well, I, I'm not from this world. I'm not from this kingdom. No, I mean, he was a, he, he was a Christian, so... He said, are you ready for this? He said, you will get $6,000 a month for the rest of your life. Well, that's what we had tithed off for all those years. As we were making $3,000 a month, we tithed as though we were making $6,000. So when I got that raise, I finished out my career at Southwest at $6,000 a month. And now I get $6,000 a month for the rest of my life. But tithing but tithing's Old Testament, okay? See what I'm saying? So... You argue about something, and you're taking away from the power. All right, so Herb Kelleher taught me how to own it, and that is that you take care of what you see with what you have in your hands to do. When people ask me, should I have an operation, They're, they come up for the prayer line, and they want to know if I, if, they, you know if I don't get healed, should I have the operation? And just because they're saying that, I say to them, I said, you do everything you can to stay alive, and you build your faith up while you're doing it. Because I know doctors that have been sent from God, they are called to do what they're doing. So you have to stay alive in this realm, because this is where the power of God is manifest in your body. So while you're here, why don't you just do it debt-free? Now, you're looking at two people that believe in tithing, and we believe in giving. So I just finished, the Lord told me a few days ago to do this. He, I finished out the year, and I, I said, thank you, Lord, for this productive year. We did, we did 49 CDs. We came out with uh, about four or five different books, and I'm tired, and I'm, thank you. And he said, oh, no, you're not done yet. You're going to do that financial, that supernatural finances book and CD. And I go, really? So anyway, I want to give this out and give these out too as well. Because the Lord just gave these to me just before we came here. Now, there's a reason why I'm telling you this. If you want to enjoy this weekend, I'm going to give you your medicine first. You need to own your financial condition. Because God, Jesus himself told me, he said, my people won't let me into their finances. And then you know what else he said? And it's obvious. Whoa. So do, do you know that your finances need healing too? That the power of God must be made manifest in your finances as well. So I'm only doing this to give the black eye to the devil because he came against me. He confronted me. He said, do not... Do not, do not do these. I go, that's it? You got to be kidding me. (laughs) 
So I did all those things that the Lord asked me to do. And you know what happened a couple weeks ago? We were leaving church, and, you, and someone handed me a check for $20,000 and said, the Lord told me to give this to you, paid for all the projects. Did you hear what I'm saying? I want to sow into your life because I believe that this is the turning point. Here's why. Jesse Duplantis just told me. He prayed for this whole meeting. And he said, he said, did you know that you were sent back from the dead for the full gospel businessmen? and women. Well, thank you for joining me for this video. I believe that it really ministered to you. Make sure that you check out my website, kevinzada.com, and the Warrior Notes School of Ministry as well as on the tab there. You can sign up for that. I've got plenty of courses available to you. I just want to pray for you because the, the Holy Spirit is just telling me that there is a revelation. There's a spirit of revelation that He wants to give you. Like Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 23, he said, and I'm just going to pray this over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that everyone that's watching has the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. And I pray, Lord God, right now that the eyes of their heart be enlightened. Thank you for joining me. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ be with you.